<laughs> Welcome to our outdoor nature natural wellness class um, with our Healthy Connections team. Um, so we're gonna we will highlight a few products that Young Living sells that would be great for you know adding comfort and protection and that kind of thing in the outdoors, um, as well as we'll talk you know mention a lot of different essential oils that would be good for different things, especially for the DIYers kind of thing. You can see the picture on the bottom right hand corner. That is the combination of essential oils that I did use uh, when our dogs were still alive and we would take them out. Um, and so essential oils are safe for pets, but there are a few different things. So be sure before you just go grab a bottle and don't stick it right underneath your dog's nose first off. There's some different things you need to learn to use the essential oils with animals, but just know that as we're talking about these things that there's a lot of these that cross over and can be used with your pets as well. Okay, and you know, we need to start just with the uh, why. why. Why is it even important to talk about, you know, protection and thing, products that we use that are natural. And unfortunately, if you look under the internal section here, there's a lot of chemicals in our personal care and cleaning products and different things like that. And so some of the things that we're using, we have swapped out things we don't buy at the grocery store anymore. Uh, because the ingredients in them are questionable. Um, they're questionable enough that if you look down at the bottom right hand corner of this screen, uh, if you go to like oceanconservancy.org and a blog and just type in something about sunscreen, there's a whole article about how our past sunscreens are killing the coral reefs. So it's not good for our environment as well as um, for ourselves. And of course, sun exposure, we all know, we all like to maybe lay in the sun. <laughs> That's really fun. And uh, getting in the vitamin D and just that warmth of the sunshine is awesome. But of course, there is the damaging, you know, cellular damage effects and things like that. Anyway, so that's that's just kind of the why. So now we're going to get into, um, and again, just a quick why. Why do we use Young Living essential oils? You know, mostly for me, at least, and I'll have, you know, Renee and Ange can add to this, but mostly is they've got control of their process from the start to the finish. And then they also have science that backs it all up. So I'm not sure if there's anything else that Ange or Renee want to add to that or not. I would agree. It's it's the science and then, yeah, just to trusting the sourcing where things are coming from. Right, right. And we've been there. We've been to a couple of their farms. I mean, so we've witnessed and, and even their testing facilities a couple years back at convention. I think the three of us were there and that, that was an amazing tour. So to see all the process. So, but that's why we use the Young Living. Okay, so let's just start then with protection for sun exposure more so just for sunburn, that kind of thing, right? Uh, they came out with this and it's actually an over-the-counter, it's under their over-the-counter um, category when you go shopping with Young Living. And the cool thing about this is it's non-nano zinc oxide. And so that provides a physical barrier to prevent sunburn, but it doesn't um, absorb into your blood screen, screen, your blood stream. <laughs> And, and the other thing that to note about this is that it's reef safe, unlike other commercial sunscreens. I know there are a few other reef safe sunscreens out there. I know when we were in Hawaii uh, over a year ago, we went on a boat tour and they were big on that, you know, and so they, they the, the guys on the boat, they had some, it wasn't necessarily Young Living, but they were looking at mine too and they liked it, so yes. Let's see, I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do now, Renee, are you ready to share that video? Okay, so I'm gonna stop, and Renee is gonna just show you a quick video on Young Living sunscreen. Yeah, I really like this video because it goes into a little bit of the science. I mean, I ne never really thought about how sunscreen works or how to compare other sunscreens to this one, so this just shows a really good, let me share my screen. The sun's rays damage skin in two ways. First, UVA rays penetrate deeply through the skin. Over time, this exposure can lead to premature aging as well as wrinkles. 
Other rays, called UVB rays, affect the surface of the skin and are primarily responsible for causing sunburns and are one of the primary contributors to skin cancer. To ward off these harmful effects, many sunscreens use synthetic chemicals such as avobenzone, octosalate, and oxybenzone to absorb these harmful rays and prevent damage. Other products use nanoparticles to block UV rays because these tiny particles can be smoothly applied to the skin and vanish quickly upon application. However, nanoparticles can also be absorbed into cells and the bloodstream where they may have unknown effects. Young Living takes a different approach. By using non-nanoparticles of zinc oxide coated with jojoba esters in Young Living's mineral sunscreen lotion, their scientists were able to create a lightweight, invisible, mineral-based barrier that provides broad-spectrum protection by blocking both UVA and UVB rays. These unique coated mineral particles are easily applied and go on smoothly, yet are too large to be absorbed into the bloodstream, minimizing the risks associated with nanoparticles. The naturally derived formula is also water and sweat resistant for up to 80 minutes, so your family's active lifestyle doesn't need to skip a beat. The active ingredient, zinc oxide, is combined with a proprietary blend of moisturizers and essential oils, including coconut, raspberry seed, cystus, frankincense, and carrot seed essential oils to not only protect your skin from damage, but to nourish and hydrate it as well. With Young Living's Mineral Sunscreen Lotion, I can protect my entire family from the harmful effects of the sun. And I don't have to worry about harsh chemicals and skin irritation. It is so easy to apply and it makes my skin feel great. Plus, even my kids love the fresh scent. Come on, Mom. I finally have a product that provides powerful protection from the sun and is gentle enough for all of us. Okay, I'm coming. It's just a really good graphic on how it sits on top. So it does leave kind of a little bit of a white residue, but not like the 80s white nose lifeguard look that you might be thinking about. It rubs in really well. It's water resistant. It comes in a 10 SPF and a 50, I believe. And um, we really like it. A little bit goes a long way too. It rubs quite nice. So another thing that we need to deal with this time of year is the ticks and the insects and oh, they just gross me out. I, I actually had a tick on me, what was it Renee, about a month ago even. I mean, it was like the yeah. first day I was out, I was only just working like in this gravel area as well. I didn't put any of my oils on, I thought it was just too early for that. And then, and I didn't even come in and check for ticks and it was a couple hours later, luckily I reached back and got it, it hadn't embedded or anything like that. It was crawling up my back. Oh, anyways, I have a, a little tick thing. So if I'm gonna go hiking, I take this little thing and it's just supposed to be a tool that helps you kind of pull them off if you end up getting one on you kind of thing. So Renee though, she's, she's got a lot more background in being out in the outdoors than I do. So any other advice? Well, and I don't have any science to prove this, but I think if you wear darker colors, I think they're more attracted to lighter. Oh, wait, let me get this straight. No, it's, it's you <laughs> have, have it backwards. Uh, yeah, you got it backwards, backwards, right? Yeah. yeah. They're more attracted to darker colors. So right. if you wear lighter colors when you're out hiking, and I have seen it, I have watched, yeah, I have seen certain people wear different colors and others get ticks and, um, it's worked well for me. If I wear light colors, then I seem to not find as many. Right. And the other um, advantage is then you see them easier. Correct. Yeah. 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 So we like to apply um, the insect repellent around our ankles. And I always do kind of the base of my hairline because that's often where they like to dig in. Right. Um, if you have pets, you can put a little on and kind of just... Pet them, Either, yeah. Yeah, pet them down, or um, if you have a spray, you could also use that. And I forgot about the wipes. The so wipes, there are yes. Single wipes available as and well. They're, they're pretty cool. So here's the thing. They're also, they're kind of pricey per package. 
you know, I mean, you get a package and then you get a bunch of them in the package. So these little packages, they're great for packing though. You know, you can pack a couple extra depending on how long you're going to be out. But here's my little hack on what I do, right? Because you have to rip open the package. You use it. There's quite a bit on the wipe. Fold that thing right back up and stick it right back in here. And I use like a Twixit clip because this one really seals really well. And I then store it. Bob actually used one. He added a tiny bit of water because he had one that was folded up that was really pretty much dried out the other day when he went fishing and he forgot to take a fresh packet with him. So he just added a little bit of water and he just wiped himself down with that too. So, so they're packaged as one use. <laughs> My hack is use them for more than that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and both, I just want to point out here, this insect repellent here you know by the insect that's flying off the mosquito this one is liquid that one came out first and then the wipes came out later so i am not positive if we can claim on the liquid one whether or not it is um because on this package it says effective against mosquitoes and ticks so then take note what are the natural active ingredients on here? So this is, if you're a DIYer and you wanna make your own spray, I always go to the Young Living things and go, what did they put in there? They've got all those scientists, you know? So right in here, they use sesame seed oil, citronella, lemongrass, rosemary, geranium, spearmint, thyme, and clove. And um, down here it says, repels insects naturally, 99% of the active ingredients are the ones I just read, and then there's 1% vitamin E just for skin, you know, just to be better for the skin. So that gives you a hint on some of the oils. And, you know, there's, it's controversial. Some people will say there's nothing wrong with DEET, but, you know, there's been some studies that say it is a neurotoxin. So no thanks. I'm not, I don't want to breathe it in when I'm spraying it on me. I don't want to, I just don't want it absorbed in my skin. So I'm gonna make my own. <laughs> and it works pretty, and, and they work good. So we, we have the wipes more for when we're going fishing or whatever, plus I wanted to try it when, the, when it came out. Okay, so I have the big bottle and this can be a little pricey as well, but this bottle I think I bought over a year ago. Okay, and it is oil-based and so a little bit goes a long way. A, much like a lot of our products, like they tend to be a concentrate, right? Mm -hmm. um, so what I've done is I have poured the insect repellent into a roller bottle and I labeled it bug off <laughs> and so this is one that I will just keep in our hiking bag and we can roll it on and so this is not going to go you know I'm not going to spread it all over me right but you could apply this before you leave and then take this for later or it's just nice to have a smaller bottle and this is a really ni nice application for kids too right Definitely. And then this is the, you know, you're seeing on the screen here, just as basically a similar kind of a hack, but you're making it into a spray. These particular types of spray bottles, I think Renee, you thought someone mentioned that they're better for a little bit of that thicker kind of a spray that has that, because there's a lot of, there's zinc oxide, I believe, in the mineral yeah. sunscreen, that kind of thing. So sometimes you have to go get a different kind of bottle. I mean, I've got quite a few things. We're going to talk about DIY here next, but you know, for this is what I use a lot of times for my house. If I want kind of an air freshener spray thing, maybe in the bathroom or whatever. And then, but it's, to me, it's easier to pack something that has kind of a lid like this but this sprayer seems to just go and go and go and go and go where sometimes the sprayers on these bottles, you know, eventually I feel like they get clogged up and sometimes I can clean them out and it all works fine. But anyways, yeah. a lot of those we just purchase on Amazon. Mostly that's what I do. I just, another thing too, that I get usually on Amazon or you could go to a health food store or whatever, but you know, when you're going to get your carrier oils and you're going to get your different things, when you make DIY, get organic if you can. I know the witch hazel doesn't necessarily say that it is, but it's unscented, it's alcohol free. I like it because it's got a little bit of aloe vera in there as well. But anyways, so on to 
how to do like your DIY sprays. Now, I guess I want to go back just for a second too, because sometimes it's fun to do the sprays because you're going to get different oils. So let's talk briefly purification, which is also on your screen there. This is a blend. And this has citronella, rosemary, lemongrass, tea tree, lavendin. There's a difference between lavender and lavendin. And myrtle, I think, is what that says. Myrtle. So sometimes I just grab the blend and I may put, you know, where before I put my socks on, that then it's gonna just look so lovely to go over my pant legs when I go out in the garden now because I'm so tick freaked out. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, I'll do that. I'll put that along the bottom of my foot, then I'll get my socks on, then I'll rub some maybe on, you know, kind of my midsection if I don't have my shirt tucked in. <laughs> And then the other thing is I do sometimes is I just drop a drop or two on my head and then, right, and then I'm gonna wear my hat for sun protection and stuff like that. So then I feel pretty comfortable and I don't have to be worried about that as I'm getting my garden kind of ready to go. The other thing though, you see on the top right hand side is that's the EODR, Essential Oils Desk Reference. Okay, so I'm going to just read because you can see one example of an insect spray on the screen. So if you want to write that down, you can. We will re we're recording this, so it will be put out there. But like even in the EODR, they have, let's see how many. They've got one insect repellent blend number one, number two. Then it's Ed and Steve Geiger's bug spray. And then they've got Sherry Ross's formula for flea tick and insect repellent. So there's a whole variety of different combinations that they have come up with that they personally like. So it's, it really is kind of a personal deal when you're doing some of these DIYs. A lot of the essential oils have more than one benefit. So that's kind of cool. So they do have another section though that's, I don't know if you can see that very well, but I'll, I'll read it to you. It's called insect repellents and they've kind of listed some. So mosquito, they say Palo Santo. So that's a P-A-L-O, separate word, S-A-N-T-O. Um, not, not one of the most familiar essential oils out there. Lemon, Idaho tansy, and citronella. For moths, they suggest patchouli and Palo Santo. Horsefly, they suggest Idaho tansy and citronella. And then um, even for like aphids, so not even just for us as humans, it's right when you're out there in the garden and you don't want to be spraying pesticides. So for aphids, they say mix 10 drops of spearmint and 15 drops of orange essential oil and two quarts salt water. Shake well and spray on plants. That's one suggestion. And then back on a different page, they list, oh, no, that's something different. There is my note, sorry. Then something that I looked up online, not, not in the book, sorry. And that said, for aphids, you go four to five drops of each essential oil, peppermint, clove, rosemary, and thyme. And then neem oil is another one that's well kind of known for gardeners and that kind of thing for doing that kind of stuff. Anyway, so doing your DIYs is rather fun and you can you know, mix your blends or you can uh, mix your singles like like you've got that. And there are a variety of price ranges too. Cedarwood and tea tree, really nothing that's up there right now is super expensive. None of those oils are super expensive. They're not like frankincense or sandalwood, that kind of thing. Okay, let me look at my notes here, make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Neem also helps get rid of lice. Thank you, Ange. <laughs> I didn't know that about Palo Santo. And I really like that oil. It's a very grounding, nice, kind of almost musty a little bit, but it's a nice smelling. It's oil. very musty. <laughs> it's not my favorite one. It's Somebody in one yeah. of my classes, they said, oh, remind me to never use that one. <laughs> they don't, they didn't like this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, let's just talk a little bit about variety of essential oils, Renee. That's Renee and her boys. I don't know how many years ago, but you guys like taking peppermint with you. Yeah, we love taking peppermint. Usually I'll bring a bottle of peppermint and lavender. Some of it's for a cooling spray. And actually my nine-year-old asked me about it last week when we had a really hot day and we were out hiking. He's like, hey mom, 
did you bring that did you bring that cooling spray and i was like no it's april i didn't think we would need the cooling spray <laughs> I don't even know where it is, but I was just really impressed that he recognizes that it works. Peppermint kind of helps your body regulate your temperature. And so I spray, we spray that on our necks and kind of the back of our head. You, it's you, really you know what else time. those two oils in that spray would be beneficial for? This type of year when the, a lot of pollen is in the air and some people are more sensitive to that, those those two oils are both listed on recommendations for that, along with some eucalyptus and uh, chamomile and frankincense, lemon. lemon. The, the other, the blends they put on there is uh, interesting. Well, Raven, of course, and they even say diagize helps with that, which is, that's interesting because that's usually a digestive help, but, um, and then Valor is another one that they do, but that's another use when you're in the outdoors. If you're one that's a little more sensitive to the pollen and the air and that kind of thing, you may want to be taking those kinds of things with you, which yeah. leads us and to- And I the, bring those in a roller as well. Yep. Yes. <laughs> I, roll them on. I roll them on every day this time of year, just to help. They haven't quite hit me yet, but I um, definitely go out for a little walk and I get a couple sneezes and I'm like, ooh, need my roller. Right. Well, I was going to say, though, there's lemon and peppermint in the digize as well. So that's probably why. I oh, there you go. They've picked a They've picked a blend that already has a couple of those in there. That's good. And, you know, the other thing, too, is and having the roll ons is good or the sprays is that what if you do get a bite or a sting? Those same essential oils, like if I look under mosquito bites, they suggest peppermint, tea tree, lavender, rosemary, myrrh, you know, those kind and purification is one of the blends, thieves is one of the blends, that kind of thing. But then, you know, if you get a little cup or cut or a scrape or if you get a sting, I was on the beach a couple of years back in California walking with my cousin and I stepped on a bee and wow, that hurt. But boys, I had essential oils with me. So that part was we were just fine. It, it didn't last forever. So that was good. Okay. So one of the things here, and we only have like about 10 minutes left. So Renee, you want to talk about, or Ange, one of you guys talk about the thieves here. Sure. Um, so the thieves spray, the small one that you see, that one is really great for any travel on the go. I use it more as Okay, so it's not really like an all-purpose cleaner. It's more of just like a cleaning spray. So I might just spray it on my hands real quickly, especially like the age we're living in right now. So I go somewhere, maybe I touched a door handle or something, then I'm going to grab that, spray it. And so it acts more like a sanitizer. Um, they don't call it that, but um, that's a lot often how I use it. So it can kind of just sanitize some different surfaces. You can, you know, laundry or not laundry grocery carts, doorknobs, car wheels, any of that kind of thing. And the waterless hand sanitizer, which is only available like once a week right now, I think is what they're doing. It's not right. fully in stock because they're trying to control people. <laughs> <The orders>. <laughs> <laughs> which I really appreciate. And, and one thing that happened was the bottle that they typically put this larger hand sanitizer in I believe is made out of the country and they had didn't have access to it that's so yeah, what they did what is they they looked outside of the box and they said well what do we have excess of and so they grabbed this other massage the brown bottle you see down in the left corner that's right. um commonly used for a lot of the massage oils and they grabbed that and slapped the thieves label on it and so they're just being really resourceful and and using what they have and so that is in a new package temporarily Yep. But um, we, are, we can now call it a hand sanitizer and mm -hmm. it's back in stock. I mean, you really just need to watch for it. My mom and I ordered it last Wednesday. It was only available for like one hour where you can right. get on an order right. and they're limiting you to two um, per right. order this time. Yep. yep. We got some for Pat too. So we were able to get in. So that was good. Whoops. Yeah. And I like the big bottle because then you can refill your small travel size bottles. Exactly, exactly. So we're going to kind of zip through the next couple slides, though, just because, you know, mostly we want you to just know, because maybe you don't, Young Living's got 
like over 600 products. <laughs> it's so easy to transfer what you normally buy in the grocery store to then transfer it into your essential rewards order. And then the essential rewards orders are where you can earn points and then you can get some free things. So it's just a smart way to do it. But they've got great things for on the go. You know, those Ningxia, the two, two ounce packets of Ningxia. And I like their little thing that they go for added refreshment on a hot day outdoors, freeze a few the night before. That's awesome. I love their einkorn granola and I like the Wolfberry bars. I am not a huge fan of the sleek bars, but, and I haven't tasted the protein bars yet. Oh, you've got, oh, and they're Ningxia nitros. Yes, very good. And just got Ningxia nitros on there. Those are really good for that. You need that added little jump during the day. Let's move on. Hydration, they just came out with this Young Living Vitality Drops. That's what I put, I've been using that. I need extra electrolytes and that kind of thing. And so I've been putting that in my uh, water bottle and it is better. It's pretty strong. So I'll put it in a water bottle that size. Before that, and still sometimes now, I just use whatever my favorite citrus uh, vitality essential oil is and add it to water. And that just helps me increase my water intake because I just sometimes I don't feel like drinking water all the time. Yeah, and those vitality drops are great to get the kids to drink more water too. But again, it's a concentrate. So, I mean, and it does have a little bit of sweetener in it. So you don't need a, a lot in your water bottle to taste good. Right. And then, so here, the reason I put this on there is, you know, you DIYers, if you like to do your DIY kind of a thing, a lot of times organic coconut water, and I think there might even be coconut in or vitality drops, I'm not sure. And then take a, whether it's like a Celtic sea salt or you know Himalayan sea salt, something like that, just put a pinch of that in with your coconut water and a few drops of that and you've got you know a good, uh, almost like a DIY Gatorade-ish type of a thing because some of those things are just not. It not also, I was gonna say, it also helps your body absorb so you don't get dehydrated. The salt does. Yeah. So I say my mom had a question about the recipes you mentioned earlier, like with the aphids. Jolene, you have that book, so I, we we can look at that. But some of these recipes we can certainly share, and we'll yes. probably be sharing on our Healthy Connections Biz page. Yeah, in the next sure. week. Yep, yep. So now that you're back home, just know again, not everybody knows this. We have a ton of personal care products Young Living does, both for men. You know, if the men don't want the lavender smelling shampoo or whatever, you know, the these foaming hand soap, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, getting yourself cleaned up, that's easy to do, you know, by shopping in your essential rewards cart. And then the other, here's a great little tip, is you put a couple drops of purification on a cotton ball and stick your cotton ball in the stinky shoes. This is just to remind you, again, once you're in, you're checking to make sure you don't have ticks on you while you're out but as soon as you're home and you're getting washed up, be sure you check for the ticks, okay? Uh, let's see, and then after, if you actually were out in the sun too much, we have a variety of things you could do. You've got the um, one there that's the over-the-counter medicine, so it's got strong enough whatever essential oils in, in there that they can use the word pain over there, immediate relief from pain associated with sunburn. Or you could go the lighter version with the Lavaderm cooling mist, or of course, you can make your own cooling mist as well. And you would just look up any of the skin supportive essential oils to add to that. And again, we have the word pain up there. So that's another over the counter category uh, in the category that Young Living has, it's over the counter, called Cool Azul Pain Relief Cream. And I use that quite often actually, but they've got a variety of things. I mean, it's, you know, a, a de the deep relief roll on, that's super easy to take in your backpack with you or when you're going to work out, they've got the massage oils. Um, and now we've got the CBD muscle rubs, stuff like that, right? Um, and of course, DIYers, you can make a foot soak or you could just do a whole, you know, bath soak, adding a little bit of um, Epsom salt, maybe a little bit of baking soda. And it says we have less than a minute, so I'm gonna zip. There's also lots of supplements available through Young Living that are gonna target different things for your musculoskeletal system. 
right? So on our website, you can go and if you click on any of those pictures for that particular body system, you're going to see supplements that are suggested, essential oils that are suggested, all kinds of products like that. And be sure to treat yourself with some healthy options, right? Whether you're using your Ning Show or your Vitality oils and making your own shaved ice, that kind of thing. And we really appreciate you guys joining us.